Um, I currently teach AS English 1 and ELD 3. I teach pre-calculus, I teach physics, and I teach attitude. I teach U.S. History and World Studies. I teach creative writing here at MA and English 2 intensive support. I teach all Latin classes from 1 to independent study. I teach uh, advanced placement biology and then uh, the regular biology. Oh, so I teach um, AP native speakers, AP for non-native speakers, and Spanish for for native speakers. I went to the University of Southern California. I went to UC Davis for my undergraduate and Stanford for my master's degree. So I went to UC Davis a long time ago. <laughs> I went to UCLA. Uh, I went to Harvard College. I studied in Europe and I uh, studied at the University of Calabria. I studied history, that was my major, but I also um, studied a lot of Russian literature classes and philosophy classes. Uh, undergraduate, I started off as an art major, intending to perhaps double major in English. Then as time went on, I started, uh, because of the general education courses, I started taking more biology and I realized how much more fun that was than I thought it was in high school. So I wound up with a double major in art and biology with a minor in education. I studied, well, I went in as a psychology major, but then I found out I was really bad at science. So then um, my counselor asked me, do you really want to study science? And so I changed it to a Spanish major. Then I started taking a lot of history classes, so I have a minor in history as well. I studied uh, English, creative writing, and American studies and ethnicity, which is kind of like the study of race in America. I did a bunch of clubs. Um, I, one of the biggest clubs that I joined was uh, called REACH, which is the Asian Pacific Islander Recruitment Retention Center, um, which we worked with uh, API students to help them um, get into college. Um, and so that actually inspired me to become an avid teacher. I did. I sang in the choir. I worked on the newspaper staff. I, oh my gosh, so much. Um, I did some leadership and like event planning activities, so I was pretty involved on campus. Um, they were a really important part of my time at college. I was a volunteer in the Children's Emergency Unit at Mass General Hospital in Boston. Um, I was also part of two organizations that were really important to me. Uh, one was the Educational Studies Program, where we got to create and teach our own classes to high schoolers. Uh, so kind of a spoiler alert for what I'd be doing after college. European colleges don't offer clubs activities. There are some kind of like theater activities, but there are no regular clubs, and that applies to high school as well. Oh, it's very different. Um, it's definitely a time to find out what kind of person you are. You know, nobody's going to be holding your hand. Sure, there are programs and there's, like you said, clubs and other peers that, you know, have the same interests as you, but it's really um, a time to, for you to find out what kind of person you are. For me, at least, college was had a lot more freedom, obviously, more independence. Um, I felt like it was there was more chances to experiment, like socially, meet people that I didn't hang out with in high school, find people that were more like um, the kind of person I think I was trying to become. And um, there's a lot more risk, obviously. You can get you know you can get caught up in some things that might distract you from school. So there's there's a lot on the line, and um, it's not easy, but it's worth it. I really wish I had solidified my understanding of a foreign language. Um, I took some Italian classes and some Spanish classes, but I waved out of USC's language requirements by taking AP German in high school. And I really wish I had chosen instead to uh, not exempt myself from that requirement, but to minor in a foreign language, because I think it's really important uh, to be able to speak more than just English. Not joining clubs. Um, I was really kind of insulated in, in my, like, because I had an apartment right next to campus, so everything was kind of right there. I didn't have a car, so I, I kind of stayed in a little zone. It was in LA, so like I would often take the bus 
to Hollywood. I had some friends who lived out there, but I do wish I had kind of expanded a little bit more into LA and like, I don't know, just looking back, I, I feel like there are a lot of missed opportunities. Um, I think one thing I did well was I learned how to study. It took me a really long time. Um, I would say probably sophomore, junior year of college that I really learned how to buckle down um, and seek help. Um, and so that's why as a teacher, I want to teach my kids to do that um, before they get to college. Definitely have regrets. And I also have things I think I did well. I think foremost in my regret I definitely cared way too much about my first college boyfriend. I should have dumped him, like, way early on. <laughs> um, I also regret, uh, more importantly, how self-critical I was. While I wasn't a first-gen college student, um, I was still uh, the daughter of a first-gen college student, and my, my dad never went to college, so there were a lot of things about college that were really difficult for me in terms of adjustment and I think I was very critical of myself and didn't give myself enough compassion so I wish I had done that more. I think in uh, one of the moments I'm most proud of is my senior year. Um, it was a big project we had to do for um, our senior thesis and it took me about a month to write. It was, it was a really long essay and research project. My advice for current seniors is um, senioritis is not supposed to be a thing. <laughs> Even if you're a senior, you should still work really hard so that you can do well in your classes, um, so that you build the foundation and the necessary habits to succeed in freshman year of college. Yes, and this is the same advice I give my daughter now that she's a senior. It's like, it doesn't matter where you go, what college accepts you, what college doesn't accept you, it's okay. Wherever you go, make the best of it. Like, wherever you go, you're gonna love it, you're gonna have to work hard, you're gonna meet new people. So it doesn't matter if you get into this college or not. Um, it's really, it's really gonna be an exciting moment and just, you know, take it for what it's worth and learn and grow and, you know, be open to listening to new ideas. School, but I would recommend if you can to go to a school away from home um, far enough that you won't have to go back every weekend um, I think it's important to, to learn to be out there on your own um, the, uh, the other thing is I would suggest is try to get outside of your comfort zone uh, your kind of bubble that you create your old habits your old um, your old like kind of routines that you got used to yeah, I mean, I would say, um, oh my gosh, so many things. I would say, make sure that you definitely focus on your academics, but also have a good time. Like, you're gonna learn so much about yourself while you're at college, and I think just being able to have fun and watch yourself grow socially and emotionally as much as you grow academically is really important. And it was a fun time, because um, it's really when all of the learning experience you built up in the high school becomes your own. Mm -hmm. um, you are still learning, but you can take ownership. Uh, because you are using what you know how to, mm -hmm. to learn more. And that's really, really fun.